So if you're joining us online, welcome to Washington Nazarene. If you don't have a church home, feel free to try us out. We're at the only blinking red light in Washington, Indiana. Uh, it would be hard not to find us. Uh, but well, this is also part of the, the service that we ask to stop the pastor. Now, I normally call for any kids, anywhere from the age of six months or talking, all the way up to 17. If you brought something from home that you think that I cannot illustrate with a biblical truth, Lois trying every single week, but she keeps failing. Does anybody have anything? We're going to give somebody else a shot, Miss Lola, because I know that you come up here. Do you, Don, did you have a couple grandbabies? Don, do you want to? Does he want to come up? Yeah, he wants to show you something. All right, let's let's see what you got. Let's see what you what you bring. See, usually this is not just an opportunity for for the kids, but for parents. Yeah. I won't bite you. I promise. I know I'm big and I'm ugly and scary looking. What you got? What is, is that a, a band-aid? Oh, that's, that's stomping me because I can't see it. What is this? Okay, we gotta have to tell me what this is. Well, I thought we were supposed to stump you. We did do it. Alright, I like it either. Oh, it feels like it feels like a metal, like maybe like a like a tungsten, maybe? That's, I don't know if it's as heavy as tungsten. You're getting close. That's all I know. <laughs> Tungsten carbon? Give him a clue. Give him a clue. It's a magnet? Is it a magnet? Oh, I think you didn't bring a magnet up here to try to stop me. Well, we'll tell you what it was. See, a magnet. Um, that's, magnets are easy. You know, I was, one of the things I've been praying for this week is, as we go into Friend Day is that we believe as Nazarenes where there's this thing called convenient grace. And what that is, is the grace of God that goes ahead of us, that prepares our hearts. He draws us in. See, God's provenient grace has drawn me into his call, to his service, and I ignored that grace for 30 years. I ran away from his call, but he kept tugging at me. He kept tugging at me. And I get good at retail. I'm going to give this back to John. But I get good at retail, and I got really good at it. Boy, I was, I was a man. And God closed that door. I got really good at, at selling med medicines and pharmaceutical sales. Yes, I was a drug dealing pastor in my first, in my early days. Well, I'll let that one sink that in for a minute. I was a drug dealing pastor. You want any more irony? I sold weight loss and anti-aging medication. So I'm an old fat guy selling anti-aging weight loss medication. And I was a pastor. And God closed that door. I was good at that too. Man, I made my bosses millions and I went out on my own. I was like, all right. It got worse. But that provenient grace keeps tugging at us, keeps pulling us in. It's a nice try, Brother John, even though I know it was, it was, it was him that brought that from home, right? We're going we're gonna to make sure that he sees me before he leaves and make sure we'll, we'll give him some coupons for some sugar because parents love when we load their kids up on sugar. Have you gotten some sugar? Did you kids be able to catch some of those in? Yeah. Um, we have a... Today is, is the first season or the first Sunday of Advent, and before we go any further, we're going to take offering. I'm going to ask Brothers John and Jim to come up forward. Um, if you do not consider this as your church home, this offering is not for you. I'm going to ask Brother John and Jim to come up. Um, oh, yeah, there's a second plate. Maybe not. Coming downstairs. I'm going to ask Brother Jim to uh, pray over the the tithe. But this tithe, if you're not a, if you're not a do not consider this your church home. That's okay. This this offering is not for you. Um, this is for those that consider Washington Church of Nazarene as their church home. This is just an opportunity for us to appreciate, show our appreciation and giving back what he has so blessed us with. Go ahead and pray for us, Brother Jim. Normally we don't do that, so I'm going to ask if anybody, since today is all about hope, does anybody have a quick one minute, and I'm talking one minute, you know, us preachers, we don't like to give up too much mic time, but if one minute testimony of what you've hoped for in the last 12 months that actually has come to attrition. For instance, um, I, I, I hope that God would give me some direction in ministry, some definite direction, and he gave me direction to Washington, Indiana, of all places. 
Does anybody have a testimony of, of hope? Nobody's hope for anything this year? Go ahead. I did. I hope just that God would just give me wisdom and show me and just love me after everything I've done. And here I sit with my children. And for us to go to church is it's just not normal. And I kept praying and praying and I'm just so thankful to be here and and now I have hope. Yeah. Awesome. I, I love the fact that, you know, there's there's a lot of different types of hope out there. We're going to go through 76 reasons of hope, so you guys can make yourself comfortable. Joking, I'm joking, relax. What is hope? We're going to be going to 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9. If you don't have God's word with you, it'll be up on the screen. But it, an older definition or the archaic definition of hope. As it says it's a feeling of trust. Our current definition, of, if you look up Merriam-Webster, says it's an expectation or desire of something to happen. It's desire and expectation. It's desire and expectation. The biblical definition is that expectation of what God promises. Yes, there are different definitions. And when we talk about hope in the, in the Word of God, we're always talking about what the biblical definition says. Leads me to some question. What is it that we as a church hope for? Not just we as in Washington Nazarene, but we as in the global church. All believers. See, I don't believe just because this is Washington Nazarene and that the church down the street, is, they're not full of believers. Absolutely they are. The church far, further on down the street with a big old steeple that has its lit up all night long, they're full of believers. What do we as a church in Washington, Nazareth, in Washington, Indiana, hope for? Our hopes and lines with the promises of God. Where does our hope originate? Where does it come from? Looking at what, what the Word of God says, in 1 Peter 1, 3, it says, Blessed be, be the Father, God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living even that word, that word of mine, living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from, is from the dead. If you, if you have your Bibles and you like to underline, underline living. To obtain an inheritance. Inheritance is another word, which is imperishable. Another word. God, I love these words. And the undefiled and will not fade away. It's reserved in heaven for you who are protected by the power of God through the faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you've been distressed by various trials. So the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to re result in a praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with inexpressible and full of glory, Obtaining as the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Let's pray over the word of God. Father, I thank you so much for your word. I ask that every word that comes from my lips be your words, not mine. Lord, I ask that you soften the hearts that are here today, that they may hear what your word has to say. That we leave here transformed, not just hearing some fluffy words from the word of God. Not some hearing some things that are give us some hope. And that we love talking about hope, but Lord, I ask that you, in some way, shape, or form, Transform our lives so we can have a closer relationship with you. We ask this into your name. Amen. There's a couple of things that popped out when I'm looking at Peter's letter. You have to look at who is writing this letter and what's it for. See, Peter was Peter was the one that, that the church was founded on. He was the one that before Jesus went away said, You are the rock I will build my church on. But see, Peter loved his fellow Jewish folks, his fellow Jews. <coughs> Him and Paul, they, they got into it a lot. They argued a lot because Paul wanted to strictly come to us Gentiles. See, that's us. And Peter and Paul, they got into it. This is written a couple, couple of years, two, three years before his passing. And it's important that we look at a couple things. The first one is that first word, blessed. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed. I, and the first thing I think of when I hear the word blessed, I think of those beatitudes. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the poor in spirit, 
So you don't have to be given meekness, and you just have it. You don't have to be given humility, you just have it. So Jesus was telling in those blessings that you know, if you have this quality, this is your reward. In this contents, this blessing is strictly given by God. We can't attain it for no way. There's no way we can attain it. Nothing we can do, nothing we can say, nothing, no matter how many times we go to church, we cannot attain the blessing from God. It is given. So hope is given. I love the fact that, again, Peter defines who God is. The beginning part of his letter, he says, look, he's, he's no longer defined in Israel. If we look throughout the entire Old Testament, the word is always referring to God as the God of Israel. The God of Israel led them across the river. The God of Israel led them across the sea. Your God keeps bringing these plagues onto us. I need you to pray to your God. It was always the God of Israel, of that chosen nation. And for Peter to turn around and say, hey, this is not just the God of Israel. This is the Lord, of, the God of Jesus Christ. And since Jesus Christ torn that veil when he died, he made it accessible for everybody. He is everyone's God. It's up to us to choose that. See, the previous limits the access to God's hope. But now, because of that torn veil, we all have access. See, one of the things with, when we look at the word Advent, the Advent means the coming or the preparation. We think of Advent as the coming of Jesus as a baby in that manger. But it's also the advent of Jesus Christ is the advent of his second coming. We're preparing now for his second coming. Hope is an inheritance. It is given. I love the fact that, you know, if my mom and dad are watching, I'm sure that they do almost every week. Um, but we have this joke. Uh, we had a Ford, 72 Ford Club Wagon van that is in my dad's will. And I want that van. Now, he hasn't had that van for 20 years. But it was that old van. It looked like junk on the outside. Oh, my goodness. Had no power steering. That's what I learned to drive in. And it would, you could hear it coming if it turned a corner. Really loud. It, would echo. it was extremely embarrassing to be taken anywhere in this van. But it's a running joke that that is my inheritance. It fades. This inheritance is pure. And I want us to look at how pure this inheritance it is. It says in verse 4, it is an imperishable. Guess what? It doesn't fade away. Like that van, it's rusted on the inside and the out. It will fade away. I used to be into jewelry, and jewelry will fade away. A lot of times people will have in, in, in their inheritance, in their wills, their jewels. And I would have clients and customers come to us to have us appraise jewelry. So they can tell us what that dollar amount is so they can will it to their kids and to their grandkids. But sooner or later, those precious metals are precious. They won't last forever. They fade. They rust. The inheritance that we're guaranteed in this hope is imperishable. It does not fade away. Our hope is undefiled. It is unblemished. It is perfect. When's the last time you got a perfect gift? A perfect gift. This inheritance is, is, is not given to you. If you don't have to wait for someone to pass away to get it. You just got to accept it. You have to make your part to do your part to accept that inheritance. It is undefiled. It will not fade away. It is reserved for you in heaven. It's there. It's not going anywhere. But again, it's up to you. Like a regular inheritance, if I were to pass away, my kids would get, I don't know, a Xterra that's a 2003. Y'all seen that? Wait till you hear it crank up. You'll hear it from a couple blocks away. So they might get a, a Subaru, but by that time, you know, I'm, I'm stubborn. I'm not going to pass away anytime soon. Um, but it's not clean. It's not undefiled. I'll guarantee that. That exterior is a little defiled. It's loud. It passes everything but a gas station. 
but not that fast. It is perfect. It's reserved for them when I pass away. They don't get it till then. That's if it's still around. Unlike that 72 Ford Club Wagon Man, Mom and Dad, I still want my man. It's nowhere to be found. Lord knows where that thing's at. It's probably been recycled and scrapped. It, we don't have to worry about the earth fading away on that hope that we have. The second thing is that that hope is personal. It is not, it is as personal as our relationship is with Jesus Christ. In verse 4 it states it's reserved for you. It is personal. So Peter is talking to this church who is starting to see trials and tribulations. They're becoming a little stagnant in their faith. It's not that they're becoming stagnant in what they believe, it's just that they're just using, they're going through the motions. Anybody ever been there? Where you just go to church, you know you're supposed to, but <clears throat> I don't go to church. I don't teach these kids. There's a time in my life where I, I, I got stagnant with my faith. I still believed in the Jesus Christ. Now, now the relationship side, it kind of took a side seat. It didn't take a back seat, it took a side one. I never once went, like, yeah, I should probably open this up and look at it. It wasn't a daily thing. Yeah, I got to teach those kids. I'll go on and teach those kids. But see, this, per this, this hope is personal. It's our relationship is personal. It requires that one-on-one. -on -one. It's reserved strictly for you. All you need to do is accept. But guess what? It is going to be tested it perseveres. See, hope and faith, they go hand in hand. That's kind of like peanut butter and jelly. You can't find hope without faith. You just can't. You think of hopelessness, it's not a, not a, not a happy thing, not a happy thought that comes to mind. Hope is, a, is, a, is always something that is enduring. It's always something that we look forward to. But it's also something we don't see. I hope it reaches 70 degrees today here in Washington, Indiana. Well, that hope is kind of unfounded, isn't it? My wife is going to get some 70 degree weather. She'll be in Florida by about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and she'll get that 70 degree weather. My hope, although I haven't seen it yet, I can hope for it all day long. Our hope is achieved through faith. Again, I used to work in jewelry for many, many years, and one of the things that we, we, there's different levels of gold. Gold is a very malleable metal. It's very soft and very, it's really not that strong at all. That's why we have carat weights of 10 and 14, because it's stronger. It can take more abuse. But how do we test it? We test it through fire. And see, the word is telling us, like, this, this, this gold is, is, is tested through fire. Its purity is tested through fire. Our faith is going to be tested through trials and tribulations. Our faith is going to be tested when times get tough. Oh, but, but Pastor, I like I want to come to church and hear that it's never going to get tough. That all my answers are going, to, all my questions are going to be answered, and life is going to be peachy. But let me, I, I'm sorry, I'm not a television preacher. I don't own any jets. My car maybe goes 45 miles an hour because I've lived here for a couple for about a couple months now. I know the fastest I've ever gone is 45 miles an hour. So I, I'm not going to preach a prosperity gospel to you. I am going to preach you to the truth. And I'm going to tell you that you will have trials and tribulations. You'll get stagnant in your faith, just like Peter was preaching or sending this letter to, to this, this group of believers. As your faith is tested, it gives you an outcome. And I love what this hope acronym says, hold on, your faith is going to end. Hold on, your pain will end. That's where our hope, our personal hope, is achieved through faith. It's believing in that unseen. Hold on, your pain will end. On what hope do you have? On what hope does your heart bring? 
What, what do you hope for? Is it in line with the same thing that, the, that we worship our Savior for? Are we hoping in the hopeless, like that 70 degree weather that's not going to happen today? I don't have to be a meteorologist to realize that I can hope for 70 degree weather all day long, it's not going to happen. See, but what I can hope for is the loved one that I sent home to see Jesus a couple weeks ago. I have that hope that she's, she's in the glory of God right now. I have the hope for those that to see a holiday season as pain and torture. That there are people here that love. Those of you that follow me on, on social media, I put out something that I'm thankful for. And one of those things is, is the gathering of, of individuals, as small as it may be, it may have been as small as two, as many as five or six. But every Tuesday night, we gather in the basement and we pray on our hands and our knees practically at times and we cry out for people we have yet to meet we cry out for people we haven't seen in months because we hold on to the hope that that Romanian grace will bring them back I see a new family here today I'm not going to point them out but from day one when I interviewed in this church Two and a half, three months ago, I prayed for that family that hasn't been to church in a while. Maybe they've never gone to church. We've had some folks come into church that it's been a while. See, I have that hope that I know that it is God's desire to see people come to see him. That God wants us to come to him. God wants us to have that personal relationship with him. See, that hope that is personal, it's an inheritance. We have to come get it. It's personal. It's one-on-one. -on -one. You don't have to come see me. Lord, thank you that you don't have to come see me to present your request to God. you got that direct line to him. It's, part of, it's required for that advent as we get ready for that second coming. Don't know the hour of the day, but I, have, I hold on to the hope. But even though that, that path is narrow, we're going to fill it with as many people as possible. That's what I hope for. I don't know if you came today without hope. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to have, ask everyone to... This is between you and God. Maybe it has been a while since you've been to church, or maybe you come to church every single Sunday. And you don't have that hope. Maybe your faith has become stagnant. Maybe you're just going through the motions. This is between you and him. But we're going to go to him and pray, because I know that his provenient grace is here. I know that his spirit fills this, this property. So maybe there's someone here today that wants that hope, that wants their share in that inheritance. Father, I thank you so much for an opportunity to come to your house and to speak from your word. Lord, I ask that you give this living hope to those that want to receive it. It is a living hope. It is alive. Lord, if there's somebody here today that it's been a while since they've come, I ask that you just meet them where they're at. As I stated earlier, the altars are always open. But see, we don't have to go to an altar to meet our God. He'll meet us in the living room. He'll meet us in a boardroom. He'll meet us in an office. He'll meet us in a break room. He'll meet us in the smoke pit. He'll meet us at a bar. That's the thing with our God is he'll, he'll meet us because it's personal. <coughs> He desires that relationship. Lord, I ask that you go to those. Meet us where we're at. Restore our hope and our faith. Energize our hope and our faith. If there's anybody here, Lord, speak to their heart.
speak to them where they're at. Restore that hope. We ask these things in your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. There's a story that it's actually in the back of my office, but I'll read it from memory because it's one of my favorite stories. This guy this loves this, loves Christmas and I like the story because it's it, it it speaks to me on a personal level. It's a lot has a lot in common with me. I'm not a big fan of those people that decorate for Christmas early. It's okay, by the way, you can decorate now. Decorate away. For, for, for all of those who like to decorate before, know that a reindeer just went on a smoker and an elf got lost his job for every day that you decorated early. I like my Thanksgiving. I like my Thanksgiving time frame. But there's this, there's this gentleman that's, that noticed that this family left this, their Christmas lights up. Man, they were burned bright. Might even notice a new string, a string going up. January 15th, still going strong. Okay, maybe they just haven't gotten around to it. January 31st, still going strong. Man, this is one thing, be lazy. Middle of February comes and they're still going strong. He's like, can you not believe how lazy they are? He's talking to his wife and he's complaining to his wife. Can you not believe how lazy this, this family is? They still got their lights on. Around the middle of March, in front of those lights, family put up a sign, a sign, welcome home, John. See, they wanted to leave their lights up for the returning soldier from the Vietnam War. Open mouth, insert foot. Those lights were a symbol of hope. That family hoping for their soldier to come home safe and sound. So I'm going to leave you with this benediction. From Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Go and be the light in your worlds. Go and be the hope in your worlds. It's the greatest thing about the, the Jesus that I serve. It's when you're, when you're exuberating his, his love, people are drawn to you. There's something different about you. Let his hope shine through you. Allow the Holy Spirit to use it as an instrument of grace to deliver that hope to the hopeless that is in your worlds. Go in peace. You are dismissed.